Yeah, so very happy to see you guys again. This is Frances coming for, to you from the DLBC Singles um, channel. And we are just a group. If you do not know us, we are a group of single people. Some of us are married and we talk about relationship, how to find a godly partner and how to go on to start a Christian home. What are the pitfalls to avoid? What are the things that would happen to you as a Christian single and how to navigate through all of those until you eventually find or are able to start a home with another Christian like-minded person like you. So on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram and we're also here on uh, YouTube. So if you're looking for us, we'll put all the description to our channel uh, and to our group and page in the comment section or in the description section below. If you have not joined the family yet, do well to subscribe to this channel, like, share with your friends and subscribe for all our um, family members part of the DLBC singles group. You're very welcome to another video. I'm so happy to see you. And um, the year is coming to an end. There's a lot of things that have happened in this year. And there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to be happy for, to be grateful for. I only have a little word that was pressed upon me this um, at this time, I don't know when you're going to be watching this movie, I um, mean this, <laughs> this video, it could be in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, wherever you are, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whenever you watch this video, is the right time for you to watch it. But for me it's evening, and this evening I was led to just share a passage of the scripture with you. And I'll tell you the topic of our discussion today shortly. But before I go in there, I want to um, encourage someone out there. At the end of the year, it's a time when many people recap about their life and wonder, okay, what have I done in the past year? How much of my dreams and plans have come to pass in the year? We recapitulate. We think back, we think through, and sometimes maybe we feel discouraged. Maybe we feel that everything has not been up to our standards. And maybe we're happy because we maybe have found the right person. You're in a relationship. Maybe you are on the verge of almost getting married or you just got married. <laughs> Whatever your case may be. This message might just be for you or for your friend, your neighbor, your sister, a co-worker. Somebody might be blessed by this. So I'm just going to say it as it is. And I will share some examples from my own experience and what I have gone through as a single person at the time before I got married. I was reading through the scripture and there's a lot of passages that tells us about the promises of God, God's promises for you as a single, God's design as he had from the beginning of creation, he made Eve for Adam. And so someone is wondering, that someone sent me a message some time ago and she said, I'm in my studies and I've been praying to know the will of God. The year is coming to an end and I have not found somebody yet. My parents are bugging me. My family members are asking questions. I'm confused. I have prayed and prayed and prayed. And nothing has happened yet. Nobody has proposed to me yet. I don't even know who to marry. It's like God is not saying anything to me. What should I do, ma'am? The only thing I thought about telling her is that God says that my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. God says I have good plans for you. God says as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are his thoughts for us. God has great plans for her. And God always will bring his plans to fulfillment in his time. God has a timing for everything. Whatever you are going through, wherever you are in your journey, just keep 
this in your mind that God has a plan for you no matter what it is no matter how disappointing it is maybe you are going through a breakup in your life maybe the person that has engaged you all of a sudden has let you go and said he does not want to continue with you anymore the passage of the scripture that comes to me is this verse in Isaiah chapter 35 and in verse 4 God is telling me to say to you today he says say to them that are of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your God will come with vengeance even God with a recompense he will come and save you verse 5 is the miracle when God has come to save you this is what happens then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped this is God telling you the impossibility with men the eyes of the blind will be opened it takes a miracle for a blind man to see again. There's no amount of glasses or optician or ophthalmologist that can solve a complete blindness. They can do surgeries, but if there is complete blindness, no doctor can restore a sight. It's just to point to the fact that God is a God of miracle. He's telling you today that He is a God of miracle. Whatever you're going through, God is saying to you today that you who are of a fearful heart what am I going to do maybe you are a man and as someone said many ladies now want a man with a certain pedigree they want a man with a certain salary they want a man with a certain class they're asking for more than we can afford are you a man and you're wondering okay so who am I going to get married to so what am I going to do now how do I go forward? Maybe I've proposed to you have proposed to one, two, three, four, five sisters, and they've said no to you. Even those that you consider your friends have said no to you. I'm here to tell you that God has not forgotten you. God has a package for you. God is working out something for you. You might not see it right now. You might not see it right now. It might not make sense to you. You might just not know how it's going to ever happen. How is it going to become like, how am I going to get married? How am I going to get my dream job? How am I going to maybe travel? How am I going to get my heart desire? Whatever it is you've been praying to God about, God is assuring you today that do not be afraid. Do not fear. He will come and save you. And this reminds me of a time in my life when, as many of you know, um, I'm going to share, maybe not directly related to marriage, but somehow it's going to come back to where we are, we are at as singles looking for a partner. As a young lady, I am a missionary's child, right? My dad is late right now, but he served the Lord all his life. And as a missionary child, missionary's child, our father had given his all to the Lord. He would give any money that he had, any savings he had as a working class, he gave everything to the Lord. His, his benefits after he stopped working, he gave everything to the Lord. And sometimes I was always wondering, like, okay, if daddy has given everything to the Lord, what's going to happen to us? what's going to happen my dad was in the university before he went into mission and many of his colleagues and friends of his had become professors um, but my dad had no land had no house had no property had nothing he lived by God's grace <laughs> he always called this verse and my grace is sufficient for you and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory my dad believed that God is rich and that there was nothing impossible for God to do there is absolutely nothing that God cannot supply there is no desire of yours that you have that God cannot meet in his infinite way but as a young girl I had faith, but sometimes I want to see. 
I believed. But I want to see something that make me somewhat believe that, okay, <laughs> all the things that he's telling us is really going to come to pass. I'm not faithless. Of course, I pray. And when I pray, I pray with a lot of fear in my heart. I pray and I will pray and pray and say, but God, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know how my heart desires are going to be fulfilled. I don't know how. I come from a large family too. Um, we have we had food, we had shelter, we had we had comfort, a certain level of comfort. Okay, um, compare uh, because I, I just want to be fair. Compared to many of my peers with whom I went to school, I was very comfortable. But I knew as a young person as a an undergraduate that there was more if I wanted to travel or have a certain kind of life and I have to build my own life and I was wondering okay so um, what's next what's going to happen how am I going to navigate through life do I always have to come back home to stay with my dad and who will I get married to um, the daughter of a pastor, a missionary, and sometimes you hear stories of uh, some people saying that um, young men are a little bit um, reserved or um, scared. I won't say scared, I won't say that's the right word, but that's the word that comes to me right now. Uh, maybe they, they like to rethink and think well before they go to propose to a pastor's daughters, daughter or daughters because they believe that the pastor is going to drill them, ask them a lot of questions about their Christian life, about maybe lots of things. I don't know what they thought, but some people believe that um, sometimes it takes a long time for a pastor's daughter to get, um, a, to get, you know, to, to, to get married. Uh, so was I worried about that? No, I wasn't because I had desires. I wanted to be really a professional woman that was my heart desire i i wanted to i had a lot of dreams i wanted to maybe one day become a professor myself have a phd go on to study more and do postdoc and maybe become a lecturer at the university or become an international lawyer i had a lot of dreams okay i had a lot of dreams i was a little girl with big dreams and I was an avid reader. I read a lot, a lot of stories, and sometimes I lived in my imagination. Well, back to the story. I went to school, and I was, sometimes I'll ask daddy questions about, okay, so what's our future going to be like? You know this song, Que sera, sera, for those who speak French. Que sera, sera, uh, whatever may be, will be, will be. <laughs> the future is not ours to tell Kisura Sura, right? It's 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 a it's a song some people don't like it. They believe that it's a a song that um, does not depend on faith but depends on not faith like F F A I T H but depends on faith as in F A T E. Like your faith is bound in stone, is you know is cast in stone and whatever it is that you're going to be in life cannot be changed nothing can happen that's how it is and that's how it's going to be um so i had a lot of fears i had a lot of fears and i can tell you that i had a lot of battles as well yes my dad was a good prayer man faith full of faith will pray for us and i depended in a lot on my dad's prayer i believed that he prayed about it it's going to be it's going to work out but how i didn't know but I still had my fears and there was a lot of obstacles as I said when it was time after my um, national youth service that served in Nigeria of course I grew outside of Nigeria I grew up outside of Nigeria but uh, for my university when I was getting ready to start my BSc my first degree my my BA sorry uh, my dad wanted us to study in Nigeria to have that side of education long story short after school we had to do national youth service we have to serve the nation and during my youth service core i had a lot of questions i met a lot of friends and people who talked about the difficulties of life and they said the labor market was going to be difficult we didn't know what's going to happen and during my service year i'm going to tell you somebody came to propose to me a young man i'm, I'm very 
quite a fit, simple lady. So he proposed to me, and because I'm open, that because I I'm down to earth, I relate with people freely. I like to to share ideas and talk to people, and you know, just be open-minded. And so he proposed to me. And after he had gone through the marriage committee, of course, in my church, in our church, Deep Alive, we go through the marriage committee leaders, like going through a pastor and then as a committee, a group of leaders who, you know, will interview you and ask you questions about your readiness and how do you know that this person is led to you. Well, that's, there's another video about that, which I'll also share uh, somewhere in the description and you can watch that video. This person had gone through that process, told the pastor, pastor led him to the committee and then he was allowed to come. Uh, I did my blood work, so we do blood work to know if we are um, blood compatible because we have this genotype. And so our genotype was fine because we are very compatible. So he was asked to come and propose to me and he proposed to me quite alright and I went to pray. God had a way of leading me from when I was I think 15. God started to show me a picture of who I was going to marry. When I say picture, the, the face was not clear, but I could see the height and I could see the body um, stature of that person. I didn't know who it was. Never it was not somebody I knew. And it felt like it was someone I had not met. So when I met this guy, okay, I've never met him before, I met him the first time during my national service. Uh, so I felt, oh, maybe he's the one. Why not? Yes, maybe he's the one. Maybe that's the person that I've been seeing in my dreams. Uh, so I was open my dead. I went to the Lord. I prayed about it. After I prayed, I had this restriction that I should pray more. So I prayed again and I was like, Lord, what are you saying? And then I had a dream again. Now I saw this person again. In my dream, I'm standing with this person getting married to them, to this person, to this individual. And the face is not clear, it's blurry. Like, I just can't, I, I can't see the face. So I expected that if this was God's will for me, then I should be able to see the face. So that was this verse of the Bible that came to me. And so it, it was like God was telling me to wait, you know. God was telling me that I needed to wait. Isaiah chapter 28 from verse 16. So it's, it's a long verse, okay? I'm just reading the last portion of that verse. It says, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious corner stone, stone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Is that verse that caught my attention. Isaiah 28 from verse 16. I don't know if I'll call it B or C, but the last, the last line, the last sentence is, he that believeth shall not make haste. I was like, ah, it's God telling me to wait. And that was the message I got. That I needed to wait. I shouldn't be in a hurry. That I shouldn't make haste. If I believe, that he is the one leading me and he is the one who will lead me then I should not be in a hurry I shouldn't make haste hmm how do I say to this lovely brother who has had all his hope alive because we've been friends as core members all of us are friendly to each other and I don't think he believed or expected me to reject his proposal or say no but God had told me and I say it to people, it's not about pity, it's not about that person's emotion, it's not about how they feel, it's about what God wants for you. It's not about pleasing anybody, this is about your life, God's purpose for your life, where God is taking you to, and what God wants you to do. So that's why you need to be emotionally unattached when it comes to doing God's will. You definitely need to be emotionally unattached. You mustn't try to. Sometimes you have to displease yourself to do God's will. Were well, there many people that were getting engaged during my, my, at that time in my life? Yes, lots of people were getting engaged. Lots of people were in relationships. And they had long night calls with lovers, with loved ones, with partners, with you know, fiancé and all that. I had my friends and at night I would read my novel while I sleep. It was okay because I was waiting on God. 
God. I was waiting on God. I wanted to do God's will. That's another person that got talking with me. He wanted to settle it with me behind before going to tell the pastor because he doesn't like, he said he doesn't like rejections. So he wanted to be sure to hear my part, to be sure that I was going to say yes if he had gone, if he goes to see the pastor when they, are, they send him to come and talk to me that I would just say yes. But I knew that was not what God wanted. And I told him one day, I said, you know what? I like you. I like that you, you talk to me and you're nice to me. And you know, you know, you, you, you share your dreams with me and your plans. And you try to make it, make me know that your brothers are doing well and that you definitely will give me a good future. I like that, but I want to wait. I want to wait for God to leave me. I've been, God has a way of talking to me and he has been doing this for for a couple of years now and I think God is leading me somewhere. I think every journey of my life is taking me to where God wants me to be. And I don't know where he's leading me to. I don't know how God is going to bring me in contact with this person. But I want to do God's way. No matter how long it takes. And well, he, he didn't really like it. Now, let's go back to this brother that proposed to me. And I had to say yes to him. I had to say yes. I had to say no to him, sorry. I had to say no to him. So I went to him politely. I told him what I felt. I told him that I don't think that God was leading me to marry him. And that my answer was going to be no rather than yes that he expected. And I told him how sorry I was that I had to tell him no because he's a lovely friend, he's a lovely brother, and I would have loved to be his wife, but unfortunately, I don't have the freedom to say yes to him. He felt disappointed, he tried to convince me, he asked me to pray again. He said he thinks that I didn't pray enough, and that maybe, maybe I'm, he said he doesn't know what it is, but he thinks that I'm the one that's not praying enough, that I needed to pray and to be sure. And he, he almost started to pester me, and I went back, thought about it, started to doubt myself, started to doubt that I was even hearing anything from God. I was like, okay, it doesn't mean that I, well, am, I, am I canal or, you know, I started to, you know, double check myself, question myself, doubt myself. But one night I was praying and I just had this strong push, strong, um, determination to tell him that this is what it is and I've gone back to pray and God was no longer on street. I was not getting any passage of the scripture. I was getting nothing. It was like God was silent. I went to him politely and I told him, you know what, let's just remain friends. Please, let's not destroy this relationship that we have together. Let's just stay as friends and that's what I want us to keep it at. Let's not get it messy. Let's not talk to each other in a wrong way because I've said no, but you're pestering me now. You're calling me all the time. I don't want our relationship to be sour. And he understood. And then he stopped calling me. He didn't keep contact with me anymore. He didn't want to be friends anymore. He didn't want to have any, you know, but it's fine. It's fine by me. I moved on with my life. Went out of that place where I was serving and went back to, um, to, uh, to Lagos and I think later on I went to my parents um, and I went to Abuja too I think I went to Abuja I was looking for a job I was trying to get into the uh, the UN UN United Nations I was trying my best trying other things trying my hands at translation interpretation and trying my hands at um, freelancing so I was doing a lot of things I was quite busy and all of a sudden I started to look for a school because I was someone I had met also through Divine Providence who had kept contact with me and she began to tell me about um, moving you know for my masters of course I told her my plans that I would like to do a masters and all that and all that and so she told me you know what um, I want you to come if you ever decide to come I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to to receive you long story short I eventually moved to Europe okay and then I started my master's there and I did my master's there while I was studying so many things many other men came my way um, white men Caucasians you know um, red Indians I mean people from the uh, the French um, colonies like Guadeloupe Martinique all these places they came to me they proposed to me it wasn't juicy yes it was <laughs> You know what? You know how it feels every year, year in, year out. 
you are still single and people begin to talk and sometimes you feel oh i thought i would have settled this i thought i got a promise of god that this will be settled this year and here i am the end of the year has come and i have not settled it yet that feeling is there it was always there with me at the end of every year i felt oh wow i still have not settled this part of my life but i had this peace within me and that's the beauty of being in constant relationship with God. When you talk to God all the time and you read His Word, God has a way of talking to you back through His Word. And those verses come to you, telling you peace be still, telling you to wait on God, telling you that God is working out something for you, telling you that all things, He loves you so much and all things that concerns you, all your heart desire he is thinking about and that he has been a human like you and he knows how you feel and that he's working things out for you all those verses were great verses of the scriptures that encouraged me i'll share a lot of them with you as we go and as i share more videos with you guys i'll share with you videos that, um, um, messages and um, verses of the scriptures that helped me in my waiting time uh, so long story short I just want to assure you, I want to encourage somebody today. I want to tell you that even the even though the the month the last month of the of the year is here, the year is coming to an end. Somebody might be discouraged and might feel like next year I'm going to be 37. I'm going to be 30 this. I'm going to be this old. I'm going to be this young. Um I'm just telling you today that don't be discouraged. Don't let that discourage you. Don't let that stop you. I want to encourage you to read your Bible. I want to encourage you to talk to God. I want to encourage you not to pack it up yet with God. I want to encourage you not to um, let the devil's voices stop you from continuing to wait on God. Lauren, Lauren Daigle sang a song. She said, I keep hearing voices in my, my head that says I'm not enough. So the devil might come with a lot of voices, other voices telling you that God has abandoned you, telling you that God is not even listening to you, he's not waiting on you, he doesn't care about you, and that you need to work it out yourself. I want to let you know that those are voices that you shouldn't listen to because God's voice is still the same. He's still the same voice that says that he will come and save you. He's telling you through his word today that he will come and save you. So let this be your watchword. Let this, this be your strength. Let this be your encouragement. Fellowship with brethren of like-minded and share prayer points. Find a friend, a godly friend, someone that is willing to do God's will and talk more with that person. Don't join the group of those who want to discourage you, who want to make you feel that you're wasting your time and that you'll never find somebody if you don't work it out yourself, if you don't compromise. Don't listen to those people. But go into the new year believing that God is working out something for you. And God is going to surprise you in a way that you never saw coming. And with that, on that note, I'm going to let you go and i'm going to say i'll see you in another video remember god will come and save you god is working out something for you and god is going to surprise you the way that you least expect he is on your side god got you he's got your back i hope that i will see you in another video just be grateful. Be grateful that you are even alive. Be grateful that you are healthy. Be grateful that you are still walking with the Lord. That you are still marching in your Christian journey. It's enough. There's a lot of things to be grateful for. There's a lot of things to be grateful for. Please, thank God. As you thank God, you will live in that, sp in that spirit of gratitude. And you won't even see. You won't even notice the voices that are telling you otherwise and you wouldn't even know just wake up one day and all your heart desire will come to pass thank you so much i'll see you in another video
by the grace of God, God willing. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for subscribing to our channel and thank you for all the comments that you're bringing, your emails, your encouragements. They are all that keep me going. Thank you very much. Thank you. From the depth of my heart, on behalf of all the members of the DLBC Singles Platform group and page and Instagram and all of our family members, the big DLBC group, I'm here to say thank you. Merci. Danke schön. Au revoir. Et à la prochaine. Next time, uh, we're planning for our French speakers. We'll try to make more videos for you guys. God helping us. On this note, um, I would like to say ciao.